Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today I want to show you how to get started building cross-platform mobile applications using the Xamarin toolset. The Xamarin toolset allows you to write uh, C-sharp code and compile it to Android or iOS applications. So the nice thing about this, if you followed along with the previous videos, we showed how to get started using Windows Phone and building your first Windows Phone app. We're going to continue with that idea and have a shared application code base that is portable to Android, iOS, and Windows Phone with one set of C-sharp code. So the first thing you need to do is you need to install the Xamarin toolset. Uh, this is um, available at xamarin.com, x-a-m-a-r-i-n.com. So if you go to xamarin.com, it'll just be a big download now button. You can head over there. Uh, they add, they they offer you a few different options. When downloading the Xamarin tool sets, uh, I'm going to go with the free option for this demonstration, and it's available to anybody for free. It's limited in what you can do, um, and, and there are some various different levels depending on what you're doing. Uh, but for our purposes, just to get an app building in Android uh, on Windows, we're going to use the free version. Now, the other thing to note as well is that the Xamarin tools run on uh, Mac also, so you don't have to be on Windows if you want to build this Android app and use C Sharp. The Xamarin Studio platform will also run on Mac. So once you download and install the Xamarin toolset, you'll see a lot of prerequisites that get installed. Uh, for Android, primarily, you get the JDK, the Java Runtime, uh, and, and various uh, Android-related SDK managers. So once it's installed, you go ahead and launch Xamarin Studio. And what you end up with is this kind of interface that if you've done any iOS development looks a little familiar. There's a kind of status window at the top here. And then the body of it might look somewhat familiar to those in Visual Studio. I would say it's probably more modeled after Xcode in the iOS platform, just from the look and feel side of things. Uh, but it's your basic code editor, code IDE, and allows you to do quite a bit of things. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just go ahead and say a new solution here from the right hand side. You can also go up here uh, to the menu and say File, New Solution, same way. And this window here should look familiar to anyone who's done Visual Studio development before. What we're picking here is what type of project we want to build. For our cases, we want to build an Android app. And you can see that you have the option to do C Sharp Android, or you can do some VB.NET in uh, Xamarin Studio, but uh, primarily it'll click it's just ASP.NET. So for what we're focusing on, we're going to go C Sharp, and we're going to go Android. And now we have to pick what kind of Android project that we want to do. Uh, in our case, we want to build uh, an Android application. This is just a general Android application, uh, nothing special about it. There's some other specialized versions for specific versions of Android, say Honeycomb or Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, in our case, we want the basic Android application. And we'll just call this Hello World. And you can pick some location to save it. Again, this dialogue should be familiar to those of you that have worked in Visual Studio before. We'll go ahead and say OK. Once you say OK, it's going to generate a project template just like you'd be familiar with in Visual Studio. And you can see there's some status up top. You might have noticed it said building. Uh, and whenever you do anything in Xamarin Studio, you compile, you're debugging, you have errors. You'll want to look up at this top window here, this top panel where it says Xamarin Studio with the bullseye. And that's where most of your notifications are going to end up. A little bit different than those of you familiar with Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, it kind of ends up in the footer bar, uh, a little more out of the way, not as noticeable as Xamarin, pushes it up to the top, like uh, it's similar to how Xcode works. OK, so what we're left with here is a simple Hello World application. And you can see that we have a file called mainactivity.cs. Uh, and that's what's opened up here on screen. It's main activity, and it inherits from the activity class. Uh, and you can see there's a little bits of code here. Uh, already in place for us. And that's an override to the onCreate method. And we're setting our content view. And we have a button that we're wiring a click handler to. So there's a little bit of code already put in place for us. This is kind of showing us how we interact with the Android um, runtime and how we do that from C Sharp. So in Android, an activity can be thought of like, um, I like to think of it kind of like app.xaml in the Windows world, or the main entry point for our application. Uh, there's some more complicated pieces. You can have multiple activities inside Android. But for our purposes, let's think of the main activity as our entry point. And when our activity is created, the first time the app is launched, uh, we want to run some code. So the first thing we want to do is we want to tell it what view to show on screen. So in the app.xaml world, if you followed along with our Windows Phone video, this would be analogous to 
the app.xaml setting that sh sets the startup window or sets what the main entry point is. What is the first view that we see when we run this application? And you can see that um, this might be a bit confusing. Uh, it's a set content view that, that's pretty straightforward, but it's picking resource.layout.main. So that's kind of an interesting um, pattern that we haven't seen before. If we look over on the left, this is our Solution Explorer. Again, familiar to those of you that have worked in Visual Studio before. And in our Solution Explorer, we have a folder called Resources. And when we expand the resources, we have a section called Drawable, Layout, and Values. And you notice that we're looking for something called resource.layout. So if I look in my layout folder, then we're looking for something called main. And you can see I have a file called main.axml. Uh, and you notice that that's uh, just one transposed letter away from XAML, uh, AXML or XAML, depending on what uh, you're looking at. And if I double click on main.axml, what you'll see is I actually get a designer. So now, Think of this like your XAML file, and it nearly is your XAML file. And we'll see that the syntax of AXML or Android XML uh, is very similar to the syntax for XAML. So when you double click on your AXML, what you end up with is a designer screen. Um, and our Hello World, we happen to call this project Hello World, which is why it's uh, shoved up at the top here. And, and this is just a basic template that's spit out for us by Xamarin, the file new project in Xamarin for Android spits out this, this plumbing for us just to kind of show how we work with things. This designer is probably familiar to anybody who's used these integrated designers before. You've got a list of widgets on the right-hand side that we can drag and drop onto the form. We can drag a button over here and drop it. You can see that the button, um, you can see that it's stacking and I can change the size here and I can adjust the size of my button and notice that I can switch positions. So my button's on top, hello world. Now this looks all very familiar. What we really wanna see is what's happening in the code that's generating this UI. Obviously this is just a designer. There's some sort of code behind it. So at the bottom tab here, I click on source. Um, just like you would in Visual Studio, you can flip between design view and code view. We've got, it's called content and source view in Xamarin, but it's the same concept. And now if you look at this, you can see this is nearly identical to XAML. If you're familiar with Windows Phone development or WPF development or Silverlight development, this page here should look very familiar to you. Some of the classes are named differently, but the idea is the same. So we've got a layout panel here called linear layout, linear being in a straight line, either vertically or horizontally. And so we've got a linear layout that's analogous to a stack panel in XAML and the stack panel in XAML has an orientation property. In Android, you've got the same thing, orientation, vertical. And now you'll notice if I flip back to content view, that's why these buttons, you see, I can't just place it anywhere. I can place them on top of each other and flip positions, but I can't arbitrarily place it because this is a linear layout. This is a stack panel and it's stacked vertically. So if we flip back to our source and we come in here and we say, you know, instead of stacking it vertically, I wanna stack it horizontally flip over to the content page, we only see one button here, but if we go over to the edge and shrink it back, now you can see that these two buttons are lined up side by side. So we had this first button is defaulted to stretch the full width because in a vertical alignment, that's what you want. Uh, but now that we've changed the layout panel to stack these things horizontally, now we want these buttons to split the width, uh, fit the content in the first button, fit the content in the second button and stack them side by side. Again, flip back to source here. We've got an orientation is horizontal, and now we've got some options for layout width, layout height, and we've got buttons. This is the exact same element. It's the same tag that we use in XAML. It's a button. It's got an ID, and we've got some layout properties, and then we've got a string of text. Now I can edit this XAML, uh, or sorry, I can edit this AXML. You can see I just think of them as the same thing most of the time. I'm just gonna delete our second button. Now I'll flip back to our content page and you can see that I've got hello world button and the other one is gone. Uh, and I can flip back here. And if I wanna change that horizontal, and in fact, let's go here, we can actually change that from our properties panel. So let's stretch this out a little bit so we can see it. You can see we have a document outline option here to show us the different elements. I'll click on my linear layout and I wanna change the properties of my linear layout. You can see I've got an orientation and I can switch that to vertical. Uh, and you can see that nothing changed because we've only got one button in place. But if I flip back to source here, you can see that it's updated my AXML file to say vertical. Okay, so that's our quick tour of how these Android 
uh, how these Android assets work together. So again, main activity, think of this as our main entry point. We're trying to find the content view of what's called a resource in Android, and that's our main AXML. That would be our view file. Then within that, there's a little bit of code that happens here. We want to find what they call a view by ID, and they're actually looking for a button with a resource ID of my button. So if we look back at our main AXML and we look at the source, you can see that this button inside our view has got at plus ID slash and then a name specified. So this is the syntax to specify that there's a resource key called my button and I'm setting this Android, I'm setting the ID property of my button equal to the my button resource key. And if I look back at main activity, I'm looking for the resource ID of my button and finding that and casting it as, or using a generic method here to give us back a button element. And buttons have click events. So here we can just wire up a click event. Notice we're using a delegate. This is just C sharp. All of this code should look familiar syntactically because it's all just C sharp. And then we're setting the button text to a string of how many times we clicked it and we're keeping account of that. So we're setting our main view we're finding a button in the main view and we're hooking up to the click handler of that main view. Okay, that's the basics of getting your first app, uh, getting oriented with how your first app is at least organized. Uh, now, one thing we wanna do is we wanna build and in Xamarin Studio, you can go up to the build menu and just press build or you can press F8. Now notice this dialogue here is telling you what's going on. Again, this is where all your status messages up top are in Xamarin Studio. You want to keep an eye on that to see if you have build errors or anything. It says build successful. So that's good. So now what we need to do is we need to run this application. Now I don't have a physical Android device connected to this machine. Uh, I'm going to run it in the emulator to show so you can see on screen how this works. Next thing I would do is go to the tools menu and open the Android emulator manager. Uh, if you see something referred to as AVD where they're talking about this dialogue here. And what this is allowing you to do is to create uh, an AVD, an Android virtual device, which is an emulator that targets a specific Android platform. Now there's a handful of them that come uh, preloaded with the Android SDKs that I that uh, are installed by Mono. So um, Xamarin preloads or presets up some emulators that we care about. So what I wanna do from this dialogue is I wanna select which emulator it is that I wanna to launch to test my app against. Uh, you can pick any of these ones in here. Um, you know, mono, mono Android emulators have different API levels, and you can select which target Android SDK you, you want to test against. Uh, I want to go ahead and test um, against, let's say, Android 4.03, so Mono for Android API 15 4.03. And in order to do that, I'll go ahead and click the Start button. And I've done this actually already in the background. <clears throat> excuse me, because it takes quite a while to launch this emulator. So what will eventually happen once you click start is you'll see this emulator window come up and it will start launching this emulator in the background. Now, this process will take a very long time. Uh, the machine I'm on is a very capable machine. It's very fast. Uh, this process could still take upwards of 20 minutes. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a big sticking point for Android development that this emulator is so slow and takes so long. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of what you're stuck with when you're working with the emulator out of the box. So while that's starting up, what I want to do is set up a few other properties on my solution. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize the Android emulator uh, AVD section here. I'm going to right click on my project and I want to, sorry, right click on the project and I want to go to options. So while the emulator's starting, what I want to do is I want to make sure that on the Project Properties, under the General Settings, I want to pick the target framework that I'm targeting with my app. Well, with your brand new application, it's probably defaulted to use the latest, 4.03. I've noticed some problems with that. I'm not sure why, but sometimes that doesn't that doesn't quite sync up with what's running in the emulator. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just explicitly pick 4.03 Android, which is Ice Cream Sandwich. That matches the version of the emulator that we started, so this is the key to getting your app to deploy to the emulator, you want to make sure that the target framework version that's selected from the general project settings dialog, uh, you want to make sure that that version matches the version of the emulator that you're going to deploy to. If there's a mismatch between those two, you get you get some errors. And what you get actually, uh, I'll go ahead and click OK. What you get is an error like I've got here. Notice in Xamarin when you get errors, you've got a little red icon here. You can click that and bring up the errors list. You'll get something along these lines. 
it says could not find Android jar for API level 18. This means that the SDK platform for 18 is not installed. Um, so it's complaining here about a mismatch between the version of the SDK that's installed on the emulator that I'm trying to run and the version that I'm targeting with my application. This is really where the biggest pain in Android development comes in is with the fragmentation of the platform. Uh, it's incredibly difficult to keep these all situated. So the easiest thing I find is just pick the lowest uh, the lowest version of the Android SDK that you would like to, to support. And then you want to start that emulator from the AVD screen. So find what the lowest version of Android in is here that you want to support. Click on that guy and click start. And that will start an emulator with that version of the API running. You can see it says API 7, API 8, API 10, 12, 14, 15. Pick the lowest version you want, and then once you do that, while that emulator is starting, go into your project properties and right-click, go to options, go to general, and pick the target framework that matches the version of the framework of the emulator you just launched. The other thing you might want to check, and I've noticed this uh, as a Xamarin, I think this is a bug in Xamarin. Uh, I'm not quite sure why this happens, but under the Android build settings, there's a default checkbox here called fast assembly deployment. Um, and if you click over the info, it kind of tells you what it does. This is checked by default. Uh, I've noticed that I've had some issues with doing fast assembly deployment to my Android VMs. I'll get an error saying uh, unable to um, uh, say something like fast dev directory creation failed. It's unable to use the fast dev deployment. Again, not, I haven't quite figured out why that is, but I found that if you just come in here to your project properties under Android build and uncheck that box, uh, it seems to go away. So, so prevent it from doing this fast deploy. It does take longer the first time you do a deploy to the, to the emulator, but after that, uh, it seems to work okay. So we'll go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna check on this Android emulator. This thing does take quite a long time to start up. Uh, it looks like this thing is still booting up. And like I said, this can be upwards of 20 minutes or so to boot up. So we'll give this some time and there it is. It's up and running now. And so we'll say, okay. And now you can see I have an Android emulator. It's a very small window here, but I can flip back and forth. I can interact with it just like I would with the Windows Phone emulator. I can go over to the apps or the widgets and it looks just like I'm running on my actual phone. So. You've got some hardware buttons, hardware keys, uh, home buttons, those sorts of things. So should look pretty familiar. So this guy's up and running now, and it's Mono for Android API 15. That should match the version that we targeted. So I'm going to come back into Xamarin. I'm going to go ahead and press play. When I press play, it's going to build my application, bundle it up. You can see these notifications happening up in the top section. And then once that builds, what's going to pop up here uh, is what should have popped up there was an option to select the running emulator. Looks like it might have figured that one out on its own because I've got the emulator already running that matches uh, that matches the shared runtime. So it looks like that um, Xamarin figured out exactly which emulator it should deploy to because there's already one running that has a matching API level for my project. Uh, so since we unchecked that fast deploy, you'll see it's installing some shared runtime pieces. Th this part of the deploy only has to happen the first time does take a little bit of time, so we'll give that a second and we'll come back when it's up and running. Okay, so we're back and we're up and running now. The deployment finished. It did take about seven to 10 minutes, so don't be surprised if yours takes that long. Uh, it deployed the shared runtimes, the mono for Android runtimes, and our package. And what we've got running here on the home screen, uh, sorry, what we have running in the emulator screen is our Hello World application. And if I click this, you can see it changes one click, two click, three click. And so that was the code that we had written. If we flip back here, that's the code we have written in our click handler. And just like we'd expect in Visual Studio, we can put breakpoints in here. So I'll put a breakpoint in our click handler. I'll click my button. And what will happen, this will be a little slow the first time as it syncs up. What will happen is now I'll get a breakpoint and I can come in here and I can inspect these variables. Count is eight. This should look very familiar to people who are used to working with Visual Studio. Uh, and I can look at what the button text is now. It says seven clicks and I'm gonna change it to eight. And I can go ahead and press play to just run through. And I'll take my breakpoint off, flip back, and now I've got eight clicks, nine clicks, 10 clicks, and that's going. So if I need to make a change to my application, I can come into Xamarin Studio, click stop. And when I click stop, the application quits out of the emulator. You can see I'm back to the home screen on the emulator. Let's say I made a change. Um, and let's say that says clicks 
foo, let's just change the text a little so we can see it, and then we go ahead and press play again. Now what you'll see is my app will build. This time it's going to deploy much faster because I left the emulator running. This is key. Don't quit this emulator. It'll take way too long to start back up. If you leave the emulator running, then it says detecting installed packages, and now let's see, it goes right to removing the previous version of the application, and then it's going to install our new version. So the shared runtimes are already on this emulator. The mono framework is already here, so we don't have to do that deployment again, which is the one that takes a long time. Now the deployment's completed. Now we're going to come back in here, and we've got our app running. You can see the output here like we would see in Visual Studio. And this emulator screen dims out. That's an Android setting. Uh, it says, hello world, click me now. And I click it now, you can see one clicks, foo, two clicks, three clicks. And so now we can see our change is reflected. We've deployed a new version of our application to our emulator. So that's a very high level overview of how to get started with your first Android project. In a subsequent video, we're going to start looking at how to pull in our to-do application that we've started in Windows Phone and how to make that cross-platform uh, capable so that we can run it in Android. But the first thing I wanted to do is make sure everybody's on the same page with how we run our applications in Android. So remember, there's a few key pieces to it. We looked at the basic architecture of an Android application. We looked at how we have our main entry point here in the activity. So we've got a main activity that inherits from activity, and that can be like uh, thought of like app.xaml. We've got an onCreate method that sets our initial content view. Remember this funny syntax, resource.layout.main. We go over to resources to the layout folder and look at main. And in main, remember, we have an AXML file, very similar to XAML. It's got a visual designer with a tab at the bottom to switch to source view. And back in main activity, we then go and find the button by ID. Remember, resource.id.myButton. We go back to main AXML. That's the ID that's specified here. And then we hook into the click event. And each time you click it, we just set the text. The next thing we do is we go ahead and run our application and remember that we have this piece called the Android Virtual Device Manager. What I recommend is that you start your emulator well before you want to start running and debugging. The emulator boot up process takes 10, 20 minutes sometimes. So I find it's, uh, it's easier if from inside Xamarin you go to Tools and you go to the Android Emulator Manager, which brings up your uh, AVD screen the Android Virtual Device Manager. And from here, you can pick which virtual device you want to run. Remember, there's a back and forth about the SDKs. Pick which one you want, click it, press start, and then let your emulator boot up. Once your emulator is fully booted and you land on the home screen, which looks like this, then you can go ahead and play from Xamarin. You can press play, and that will deploy your package. The first deploy takes anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to install a shared runtime. It's a very slow process to get going. Once you're up and running, leave the emulator running, don't close it, and then you can start iterating on your development. You can come in here, uh, you can stop your app, you can make an edit or a change, and then you can come back in here and redeploy your app, and it just does another compile, and then it has to do a build, uh, oh, sorry, it has to do a deploy to the device, remove the previous version, and then install the new version. So it's a much quicker process. Uh, if you were to close this emulator, you'd have to relaunch and go through that whole process again. So that's getting started on your first uh, Android application using Xamarin. If you uh, follow along in subsequent videos, we're gonna switch over to our to-do application and start to dive into the structure of that app and how we can do cross-platform uh, Windows Phone and Android development using the Xamarin tools.